100 years ago, something really amazing happened. There was a special airmail flight and it flew right over the top of your school here. The tiny hamlet of Mummelgum in northern New South Wales is hardly a household name, but back in 1920 it was part of a crucial moment in history, the nation's first official airmail delivery. Such an important piece of history for regional Australia and um, just untold. Out of it we've come to have better communication, much quicker communication, and an industry that employed thousands and thousands of people. 100 years on, these children are writing letters to be carried in a historical reenactment of that first flight. The flight flew on the 26th of June 1920. It was carrying an astonishing 8,000 letters. That's a lot. The story these children are discovering was nearly forgotten until stamp collector Jeff Wotherspoon and the members of the Lismore Stamp Club decided to research their town's postal history. Back in 1920, the social development, social fabric of, of all regional communities revolved around the post office and mail. It would take about four to five days to get a letter through to Sydney and then, a, then another four to five days to get back. It was critical that that communication be improved. When Jeff started digging into Lismore's archive, he discovered the event that was critical in the history of Australian airmail. The first clue was in the photo albums of the descendants of mail contractors Walter and James Lynn. This is a photo of my grandfather, Walter Lynn. He was one of the mail contractors and he was on the first sanctioned airmail flight. And this is the Avro with James Lynn and the pilot, and he's holding the mailbag in his hand. Despite the family photos, there was doubt this airmail delivery was official. They wanted me to find it in a box somewhere, some proof, and I went through thousands of boxes and I couldn't find any proof. But it was a Lismore Chamber of Commerce record that provided the proof this flight was an official trial for the Postmaster General. Here we are. Mails by aeroplane. President welcomes Lieutenant Roberts to address the meeting. Lieutenant Frank Roberts was a World War I pilot who just days before had flown into Lismore. Dad just had a belief that flying was going to be one of the future things in the world and how important it was. Like many ex-fighter pilots, Roberts was making his living with displays of daredevil acrobatics and taking brave customers for their first flight. And he knew that this was in the win wings and if he could help, it, which, which he did, it, it, it would happen and it happened. The turning point was Lieutenant Roberts' impassioned speech where he convinced the town fathers that delivering mail by air would be safe, cost-effective and fast. As a result of the whole presentation, not just my father, they decided to go ahead with it in a matter of two or three days. In 1920, the whole community got behind the trial, writing 8,000 letters to go on the flight. Today, history repeats. Schools, Australia Post, the Vintage Car Club and even a modern-day biplane aviator have volunteered to help re-enact the original flight. Because now I'm part of this history of, of delivering the mail. And, 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 and even more importantly, one of the letters that they've got, the 100-year-old original letter, was delivered to Otho Street, Inverell. My dad lived in Otho Street, Inverell. So, I mean, I didn't know that until today. So there you go, that's why I'm here. <laughs> At 2.30pm on the 26th of June 1920, the trial airmail flight took off from Lismore, touched down in Casino to pick up more post, and then headed towards Tenterfield, passing right over the top of Mummelgum School. We learnt about the pilot who dropped the bag of letters on top of the Tenterfield post office. That was my favourite because he was being cheeky. The journey that took a day by road was just two and a half hours by air. The test was a success, and by the early 1930s, Lismore had won its own airmail service. The biggest thing for me is, is recognising and understanding how important this was to the people at the time. Something was achieved for regional Australia by a total 
all of community involvement. 